Hi there, welcome to another video tip for Catalyst Magazine from Lynn Allen. I'm coming to you, well, okay, from my home away from home, a hotel room. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining me this week. So today, we're going to continue along the vein and talk a little bit more about parametrics. So the past couple of tips that I've shared with you had to do with geometric constraints, and hopefully you watched those and you're familiar with those. We're going to move on to this next panel of dimensional constraints and we're gonna learn how to create dimensions that are super smart, have a higher IQ. We're gonna create dimensions that are gonna drive our geometry. Let me show you what I mean. All right, so the first thing I'd like you to do though is to drop this down and make sure that you have it set to annotational constraint mode. Why? Well, because I said so. <laughs> it's just gonna make our lives a lot easier, all right? And you're gonna feel a lot more comfortable with this, trust me. So we're going to do some dimensions, and you're going to see that this feels, for the most part, just like regular, not so smart dimensions. So I'm going to do an align dimension, I'm going to hit an enter, and I'm going to come over here and select this line right here. I'm going to pull out to where I want the dimension line to go. Now this looks a little bit different, doesn't it? Well, it says 15.2733. You know what? I really wanted that to be 14. Watch the geometry. And you're going to see that that dimension changed the length of that line. It changed the geometry. Awesome. That's kind of odd here. It says D1 equals 14, and it's got this lock. We're going to talk about that in just a bit, so just hang with me. All right, I promise, we'll make, I promise you will make it look okay. Okay, right, let's do another one. Let's do another align dimension, but this time we're going to do the way most of you probably do it, and the only way I could do it in this case, where we pick the two endpoints where we want the extension lines to go. I'm going to pull that out, and ooh, that really should have been 51. Watch the geometry. You'll see that it changes the value of the geometry. It changes the distance between those two points. Awesome, number two. <laughs> Okay, let's do another one. And that guy, can you see, he's called D2, second dimension. It may not always number as nicely as that, so don't get too used to it, but usually it does. All right, let's do another aligned. I'm gonna hit an enter so I can do an object, and I'm gonna select this line over here, pull out where I want it to go, but this time, I wanna set up a relationship between this dimension and the first dimension that I drew. Check this out. I can just select that dimension. See, it says D1, and I can say, oh, I really wish that that line, the length of that line is always twice as long as the other one, D1 times two. So now I set up a relationship. I definitely modified my floor plan, right? So if I come up here and I modify D1, let's say I set that to 10, check out D3. All right, awesome. So it's gonna modify the values based on whatever I do to that initial dimension. Now, it doesn't look very good, does it? D1, D2, I can't print a drawing like that. I can't turn that in. People are gonna wonder what's up with me. So, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drop this arrow down right here. We're gonna change what we see on the screen. Right now, the dimension name format is set to name and expression, which I like when I'm first putting the dimensions on the drawing, but I definitely don't wanna submit it like that. All right, so I'm gonna drop this list down. And I'm gonna say, just show me the value. And you'll see that it looks, and here's a little example of what we're gonna get. And you can turn the lock off if you want, that little lock that shows up. But to be honest, I like to keep the lock so that I know that these are smart dimensions as opposed to maybe I might have some not so smart dimensions in my drawing. So I can tell which ones have the high IQ and which ones don't. <laughs> but if it's bothering you, you can turn it off and I promise you that the lock will not print and that's what's important, right? Now they look like regular dimensions, who would know? This is set to 10. This is set to 20 because remember, it's twice the length as the first one. Okay, we're just gonna do just a little bit more till you get used to it. We'll just do a little bit more. I'm gonna come up here and I'm gonna do a radial dimension, right? And I'm gonna select this circle right here and pull that out. Uh, let's put that maybe to 14. And let's do one more. Let's grab this circle here, pull that out. Uh, but this time, once again, I'm gonna set up a relationship. So I showed you how to do multiplication. Let's go ahead and set this up so it's divided by two. All right, so now the inner circle is always gonna be half the value of the outer circle. Really, let's check it out. Come up here, I'm gonna set that to 10, and you'll see that the inner circle changes to five. Easy, wasn't that easy? And they're smart, they're super smart dimensions. All right, so promise me that you're gonna check these out. Promise me that you're gonna give them a try because they're gonna save you lots of time when your designs change even though I know your designs probably never change. <laughs> Wouldn't that be nice, right? So thank you so much for joining me. 
give those dimensional constraints a try. I'm going to see you back here in two more weeks. All right. Have a great rest of your work day.